Hello, you lucky, lucky people! Welcome back to Python from the Ground Up, part 4B, I guess, where we're going to uh, look at while loops. We had a look at for loops in the previous video. We're going to look at the other kind of loop now. Now, can you remember I said there was two types of loop? We looked at for loops last time. We're going to look at while loops this time. Can you remember what the difference was between a for loop and a while loop? Pause the video if you need to think. OK, here is the difference. A for loop executes a set number of times. A while loop executes until a condition is met. Now, as before, I've got a little flow chart here. The while loop flow chart looks a little bit uh, less convoluted. We come into the loop. We check to see if the condition is true. If it is, we execute the loop body. We go back and we check again. Is the condition true? If it is, we execute the loop body again. Eventually, we'll get to the point where the condition is no longer true, Okay, in which case we exit uh, the loop uh, body and we, um, we go to the next line of code. Straightforward, right? So let's have a look at how this works in practice. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my uh, times table for loop here. And we're going to create a loop which is going to ask us uh, if we're there yet. Okay, it's going to be like a virtual uh, virtual car journey. Here we go. So first of all, we need to have some sort of variable that tracks whether or not we are there. And we can assume that we are going to start off and we are not going to be there. So we're going to have there equals false. Okay, we're not there yet. Okay. Now, we need to have a while loop. The way we start off a while loop is by saying while. And then we need to give a condition. OK, so we could say while there equals false because we want to keep on doing this while there equals false. There's a better way of writing that. OK, instead of saying while there equals false, well, we could say while not there equals true. OK, but an even better way of doing it is to just say while not there. OK, if you're dealing with Boolean values, the condition will execute if the condition is true. You don't have to say equals true. You can just say while well, not there. If that is true, okay, we are going to execute this while loop. Okay, so we are going to have an answer. Uh, we are going to say input. Um, are we there yet? Uh, and let's make it a yes no response. Okay, uh, and then we're going to say if the answer uh, equals yes, we are going to set there to true. Okay, that is all that we need. Okay, so we're setting there to be false, and while there is false, or while there is not true, we are going to ask this question. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? The moment we say yes, okay, we set there to true. Okay, so let's just run this code and see what happens. Are we there yet? No. 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 Are we there yet? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, this is a uh, conversation that parents across the universe uh, have um, uh, wished would never happen, and yet still does. Okay, but now you've got a now you've got a virtual uh, reality uh, car journey there for you. Okay, there is one very important point that I want to make though. Okay, we don't exit the loop the moment that there becomes false. Okay, as an example. Um, I could do this, right? If I add this line, print we're not there yet, you might be tempted to think, well, that's just going to print that out while we're not there, okay? As soon as we say we are there, we're going to exit, and so we're not going to print that out. Let's have a look at what happens. Are we there yet? No. We're not there yet. Are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. If I say yes now, it still says we're not there yet, okay? And the reason is... When you are going through the loop body of a while loop, you execute the entire thing before you go back up to the top. It's only when you're at the top of the loop that you check to see if the condition is true or not. 
Okay, that's the only time. So anything that happens after that, you know, it's not getting checked. If you do want to exit the loop, you can use a break command, but it's generally frowned upon uh, to use breaks all the time. There's some circumstances where they're necessary, uh, and just to give you an example of how this would work here, I say we're not there yet, we're not there yet. If I say yes we are there, you can see it's exited because we've broken out of the loop. But try and avoid using break uh, unless it's 100% necessary. Okay. There's a while loop. Okay. Now, I've got a challenge for you which is going to combine the stuff that you learned last lesson with the um, for loops and the stuff that you learned this lesson with while loops and that is to write a program which will ask the user to enter a number okay and then it will print out the first 10 uh, numbers in the times table for that number but if they enter the number 0 you want it to exit the program okay so it's going to keep on asking them and printing out those timetables until they put in the answer 0 you reckon you can do that cool have a go at it pause the video if you need to okay and then you can come back and we can have a look at how you might have gone about it there's lots of different ways that you could go about it okay so have a think pause the video okay remember you are asking the user for a number if they enter zero you're going to exit if they don't enter zero you're going to give them all the times tables you're going to keep on going until they enter zero Okay, so I'm going to start off by saying number equals minus one. Okay, it's a it, there's a reason for it, and I'll get back to that in a in a second. So we're going to say while number does not equal zero. Okay, because we want to do this while number does not equal zero. As soon as they type in zero, we're not going to do it anymore. Okay. Uh, we are going to first of all ask them to enter their number. We're going to say number equals int um, what times table do you want? What have I done there? I don't want to search there. What times table do you want? Uh, what have I missed out here? I've missed out the input command. What an idiot just to show you that even I make silly mistakes sometimes um, while number does not equal zero number equals input what times table do you want and then we're going to say for I in range um, 1 comma 11 because we want to start off at 1 and we want to go all the way up to the 10 times table we are going to print um, I times um, number equals I times oops number. Okay, and presumably we want to um, let's say um, print. Let's do it again. I'll put in uh, type zero to quit. Okay, and then at the end we are going to say goodbye. Boom! 
Okay, let's run that. Let's test it out. Uh, what times table do you want? I want the 5 times table. Oh, look, there we go. 1 times 5 is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 5 is 15, all the way up there. Let's do it again. Type 0 to quit. Okay, let's have the 876 times table. There it is. Okay, wonderful. Uh, but I don't want to do it again, so I'm going to put in 0. Ooh. That's interesting, isn't it? I've explained why that happens that way. Okay, you probably have an idea how to fix it. Okay, so I want you to just say out loud why you think it's printed out the zero times table when it should have just quit when I typed in uh, zero there. And if you said, say it along with me, we don't check the condition until after we've executed the whole loop body. So because I've typed in zero here, yeah, okay, number is equal to zero, but I've still got to execute all of this stuff here. Um, so I could put an if statement in there saying if number equals zero, um, break, um, or probably a better way of doing it might be something like this. If... Uh, number does not equal zero, okay, then we are going to execute all of this stuff, okay? So if number equals zero, we're not going to execute that stuff, we're going to skip over it and go on to the next thing, okay? That's a slightly better way of doing it than using a break command in there. If I run it now, what times table do we want? Let's do the, I don't know, that times table. There we go, that, that, I assuming that's correct. Uh, let's do it again. Let's type in zero to quit. Boom. Now it works. Okay. So using if statements to double check whether or not we should be executing this stuff or not can be very useful in a while loop. Okay. If you've got the check, if you've got the, the thing changing, which is going to alter the condition right at the very start of the loop body, you'll probably want to put an if statement in there just to double check that uh, the, the stuff doesn't get run uh, when it shouldn't. Okay. Okay. Now, there's one final thing that I want to do before we, uh, before we move on. Uh, and that is to get some graphics on the blend. But you know what I'm going to do with that? I am going to create another video because we're going to look at importing modules in the next video. OK, we're going to have a look at how to import a module that will allow us to draw some simple graphics on the screen. OK, and we can further uh, develop our knowledge of loops using those graphics okay so if you're not quite sure about for loops not quite sure about while loops at this stage do not panic okay we are going to be building on the knowledge um, in the next tutorial um, and we're also going to have a look at random numbers okay now after we have looked at the graphics and at the random numbers We'll be at the point where you know how to do maths, how to um, put conditions into your program, how to put loops into your program, how to generate random numbers, and that means you will be ready to write your first game. Now, don't get too excited because it's not going to be Call of Duty. Okay, it's going to be a text based thing, okay? Uh, but you know what? It's going to be your first game. And so who cares if it's if it's text based, you're going to make it and it's going to be awesome. OK, so tune into the next video to learn how to import modules, how to generate random numbers. And then the next video after that will be making our first game. I guess toodle pip.